Okay, meeting come to order, uh, January 22nd, 2020. Uh, it's going to be audio and videotaped. Can we have a motion to open the meeting? Make that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. I'm going to do a roll call uh, from my left down and around to Wanda. Your name and your, what you do for a living. I'm Marilyn, I'm a conservation agent. I'm Roger Cabral, I'm a commercial lender with Bristol County Savings Bank. No, I'm uh, <laughs> chairman of the board of selectmen. <laughs> so, so, so if you need a loan, you get a seat. <laughs> I'm Julie Hebert, town administrator. Kevin Gallagher, fire chief. Mark Sinorizio, planning board. Uh, Joe Correa, the soil board inspector. Uh, Mike Warner, I'm, I manage PJ Keating's Lunenburg quarry. Carl Turgeon, maintenance manager, PJ Keating of Cushman. Uh, Doug Vigno, PJ Keating, Environmental Compliance Manager. Wanda Hema, Secretary. Okay, I guess we're all together here. So we've got a full house. Okay, we're going to start with a uh, discussion with, uh, get you guys out of here because you're from out of town, so I don't want to get you going. Continue updates from PJ Keating, improvements, asphalt plant, trench drains, status on decommissioning of the old asphalt plant. Review of matters presented, voters may be taken. What can you tell us? Brief is on everything that you guys are going to do. What's going to happen? <coughs> as we uh, as we jump along, we uh, lose some time because we don't meet every month. But mm -hmm. you, you guys were working on the drain. You've been doing uh, you've been tying in the gas. Yeah. Um, there was a little bit more information I think that you were going to give us on the decommissioning plan when we last talked. About tightening it up a little bit because, again, it was looked like it was a huge project. So I guess those are the things that we're kind of looking at before we move on to the. Okay. Well, um, yeah. As far as the asphalt plant concerned, yes, uh, tied in at the source. Uh, it's just completing that work right now for us. Um, the plan is uh, moving along as anticipated. Um, the track is for a, a March startup. In testing on the asphalt plant. Um, the chief and others are well, well aware that we need a, a, a land use permit for that, so we'll be meeting with the town on February 11th for, for that. Uh, so as far as the decommissioning plan, it was our understanding that uh, the um, town was going to provide us with information from your town council on what you specifically wanted. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I know that we were going to do some talking. The, the town council part of it was, um, for what I remember, so again, it, it, it might have been an error, was to do with the MOU and, uh, um, and, and the bond. So mm -hmm. we were going to have a conversation about how that all went together. Because we, well, we're going to, we, I, I think I might have suggested town council yep. review the form of the bond how that, that was provided. I, we my, did have that. Yeah, my but best memory was we didn't like the, the form of the bond hadn't changed in right. 20 years. Because it was under Tilcon. We thought it should be refreshed. And so we did yep. sign a new MOU under PJ Keating. Um, MOU we, Memorandum of Understanding? Yes, because that was the Tilcon uh, MOU. MOU yeah. with who? So in the package that we sent in, that was a concern because it mentioned Tilcon. Yeah, so, so I, we did. It, we, I did send out our concerns yep. to town council. Town council did respond um, from the top to the bottom in regards to where it came from, how it got to the point of what it was, even some some of the uh, discussion about how they looked into how Tilcon and PJ uh, or how PJ acquired Tilcon and the legality of that. Um, the no, long that wasn't distributed, I don't think, Joe. I don't, I don't think. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. If it, I, so it wasn't going to embarrass me, that's fine. It, I don't, I don't recall it, seeing it. it. Okay. Um, anyways, what I'll do is I think it was just an email um, that they responded to. And, and basically... Did, did what, uh, the, the board members get that email? So I thought so, but maybe not. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I, I, the cliff note version of it really is that 
it was essentially okay, and it was built because of the fact that Hilgott didn't agree. Um, Tilcon didn't agree at the time with the soil board bylaw, to make a long and short story of it. So they felt as though they were grandfathered as a quarry, grandfathered in that position, you know, and again, when it was residential, yeah, when it was residential, there was probably an argument to be had there. But now that it's been rezoned as industrial, we go back to the original discussion that we had asked our town council to talk about in regards to who had the, uh, the controlling, um, who controlled basically the, uh, the, the oversight of PJ Keating. Town council went back to the fact that it was the soil board uh, and then the board of health in regards to that. To step even another step ahead, beyond all that, they redid the MOU, and the <coughs> MOU acknowledges Section Nine of our of our uh, of our application, which is also the same acknowledgement that they sign that the the selectmen sign on a license, which is basically all of the regulations. Yeah, 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 fine with that, but I think the question, I thought we were talking about the bond and the form of the bond and the fact that the form of the bond that we've got is from the... Some of that's been freshened up in the application, Okay. Um, and basically it's all essentially okay. All right. I mean, that, that, is the, that is that letter, or the, or the email back from okay. that. Yeah, I, I don't think I've seen, I don't think I've seen this, Jim. I, 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 I like your, I like your card. Yeah, I, I sure. Like your so well, we have it here on here. This here it's still a million bond million. on security type of bond 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 amount required one million. It's on this paper right here on your permit. Yeah. So what we did was uh, because it referred to Tilcon in the previous. So the old bond was I can't remember the exact amount, but it increased to a million dollars. So that still had Tilcon's name on it. So we went back to our bond. Um, Provider and had PJ Keating's name put on it. So the new million dollar bond or the uh, the ongoing one says PJ Keating on it. So, um, but as far as the merger is concerned, um, we sent in the paperwork for the merger from Tilcon to PJ Keating. How that occurred? So Tilcon is PJ Keating. Right. So um, when we merged, so they're all under the CRH, you know, uh, which is the corporation CRH. Um, and we are the, uh, the operators of, obviously, the Cushionet, uh, but it says P.J. <laughs> Keating, a Massachusetts corporation, uh, with and into Tilcon Capaldi, uh, will acquire the rights for the Cushionet facility, basically, through that merger for $1. Yeah, because there's no more Tilcon Capaldi. Right. 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 No, it's just uh, P.J. Keating, right? There's still a Tilcon. Or it's still Yeah, them. yeah. Down um, in, yeah, in Connecticut. They're in Connecticut. They're in Connecticut. No, they drive. No, they drive. It's just Tilcon. They're in New York, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania. Because you guys just took on Connecticut. Not too long. All of it. Yeah. <coughs> and that's more. We just want to get things straight in here. Yeah. So this one is going to be for yeah, right. this particular town. Mm -hmm. You know, not for any other town. We could kill us about any other town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get yep. worried about our own, you know? Yep. No, it's, it's I think a, that sums it up right here. Yeah. Uh, well, um, if you have any other questions, you bring it up. Yeah, so, I, I mean, I'm not sure that this addresses the bond. I think the concerns that were expressed the last time were we got a bond that goes back to the 80s, and, and we've sort of just that was another yep. layered on to the 80s bond. And I, I, I guess there were two conversations we had last time. We wanted to know what the decommissioning plan was, and we wanted to ban a bond to back the decommissioning plan. Mm -hmm. So we talked about what what um, what is what does it take to decommission the quarry, and mm -hmm. you, you all were going to go out and think about that. I mean, you brought in a plan that showed parks and, and grassy areas, and but mm -hmm. so I think you were going to think about what was realistic, and I, I think the chief, you know, we talked about the fencing alone would be a million dollars. So. Mm -hmm. We weren't really sure a million dollars was sufficient, but I think I think I, I, I question the form of the bond that we had, and I wasn't sure that the form of the bond that we had was even 
appropriate for 2020 or 2019 or wherever, wherever we were. So I, I guess I'd like <coughs> to start with a brand new bond, bond document that's, that's throw the old one away, starts, is dated 2020, and just is, is a now document rather than a, you know, something appended to a document from the 80s. Well, the, that's, the that's new bond is, is new. Yeah. But the, the question, the, the discussion, the last time that's been that's been cleaned okay. up. All right, that's the uh, question. Yeah. I haven't seen any. But of that we yet. haven't, um, we haven't. Uh, it was still the discussion was about the the, the, right. the that so, commission. Right. If, if I may, I think the discussion was that would a million dollars pay to do what we put on our decommissioning plan, and we we said that. Um, and I think the concern was, like, if we um, went bankrupt tomorrow and left, then what would the town be left holding with? And uh, besides a million dollar bond. Yeah, a lot of money. Juice. Um, there would be, a, yeah, the, the value of the quarry in and of itself, if we were to fold tomorrow, would be a windfall for the town of Kirshnet, like you wouldn't believe. How, uh, how, how would that be? Because the value of the, the rock. <laughs> yeah, but if we don't we don't own the. But you land. if you hired someone, just as we operate the quarry, and make money off yeah. the quarry, then if we were to lose that ability, or we folded, and turned it over to the town of Kushnet, you could equally hire someone to to, yeah, to that's mine not, it. That's not. I mean, I don't. Okay. That's not and, the way it would work. That that that's not what would happen. I mean, if if the company folded. The company would be in bankruptcy. Your creditors in bankruptcy would okay. go after your assets. The quarry would be liquidated to the higher bidder. The town of Akushnet would be entitled to the taxes we're owed, mm -hmm. and that's all we'd be entitled to. So we would never inherit the quarry. Mm -hmm. We'd we all we'd get is the taxes. So that's okay. really not the way that would play out. Okay. Well, I'm sure you're right. He's a, he's a banker. Um, so let me take take another look at that. Um, <laughs> the the the. Um, the idea was that, if I'm not mistaken, that you were going to contact, and I believe it's Copeland and Page, yes. the town council, Agreed. and ask them what they thought of the way the bond was written and whether the decommissioning plan is uh, adequate in their estimation um, and is the million dollars adequate in their estimation. Um, we can do calculations on what it would cost 80 years from now to, you know, yeah, no, decommission the plan. Expect you to do that. But it, I, truthfully, it's it's my recollection and in my notes that Copeland and Page was going to be contacted and asked, yes, what would you expect from PJ Keating for a bond and a decommissioning <coughs> plan? Well, two, there's two pieces. That the, yeah. the bond piece we were supposed to have our attorney look at the form of the bond, which I guess they did. But I, 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 no, I'm not seeing that in the letter. I mean, I, I I'm not seeing that in the letter. Did they look at all the bond materials? Because that's not what this says, I don't think. Uh, I, well, the only thing that maybe that I was misunderstood by is exactly what you were looking for. I threw the package out to them. Basically, in the back side of that email is what I sent to them. I don't know if it's exactly what we're, I mean, what, what we're in line with. Maybe take a look at that last paragraph there that I sent to them. You guys got me all confused here. Now, you're talking decommission of the asphalt plant, right? No, 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 no. Quite, if we were to fold tomorrow, I mean, if we were to, no, I'm sorry. The, the, the question we go to the last of, time, I remember, what is it worth? If we go to the end of the road here. Right. What is that place worth? I think that's what the words were, what that place is worth. No. I remember that. Yeah, I, there was a discussion what about was basically worth. the decommissioning plan. Oh, to de worth. What's it worth to decommission it? Yeah, yes. agreed. Yeah, what, what's it? If you decommissioned it, what's the value of that? And we, I thought you were thinking about that. We asked you to think about what that really was. I think the chief pointed out the value of the fencing was. Mm -hmm. And then, well, do we have minutes for the meeting? Yeah, we do. Uh, can we check and see if Copeland and Page had anything to do with? Uh, Copeland and Page was supposed to review the bond. I'm not, yeah, agreed. yeah. I'm not sure if that. I'm not sure if that happened. They were supposed to review the bond. Yeah. There's plenty of minutes. <laughs> Those if it's in there, read it. They haven't been accepted yet. Oh. Yeah, I don't. 
Yeah, again, like I said, with this, I, I don't remember that specifically to review the bond in the sense of what the money monetary value was, but more so to, to clean up the whole PJ Keating back and forth if it was, if it even worked, if it, any of that even made sense because the bond was, there was an MOU, the MOU was referring to the bond, the bond was in, P, uh, was in Tilcon Capaldi's name, and, and the new bond that had just came out was in Tilcon Capaldi's name, and how all that merged together is what I had them take a look at. So, moving forward, so we don't get too hung up, if we want to have them take a look at what a value is to decommission the accretion at Gloria. They, they never know. Right. That's I, not what they do. Right. I, 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 I could ask them, but I mean, I think realistically, the, the conversation back and forth was, you know, you showed some parks and stuff, and, you know, I know that the board was starting to look at it and say, oh my God, it's going to cost, the, you know, more than a million dollars to do the park. Mm -hmm. and, well, we, we can certainly price it out, what we put on the paper. Um, or something more but, realistic, I think. It, or, or but what does that mean with regards to the bond? means the bond should get close to the backing the value of that. Mm -hmm. But that's why we were going to get legal counsel's advice, because there's value on the site right now also. And I, you know, for it that if we went under, then, you know, the creditors would come after us and so on and so forth. Um, and we could do that exercise. I think we all agree that it would be a very large exercise to accomplish um, for the purposes of what we're trying to get at and the, uh, and, and the understanding that, um, you know, in, a, in this, I mean, you can take it for what it's worth, but realistically, we're not about to, to, to fold. Um, we're, we're part of a huge corporation that has, you know, significant funds available. Bigger than Enron? Not bigger than Enron. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. just, I'm just going to the minutes. Um, so That's let's a see. whole different story. All right. Slugman Corral asked PJ Keating if they had, uh, he doesn't feel that the million dollar bond will cover the cost of what is being proposed. Chief Gallagher agrees with Selectman Cabral and feels that the bond should cover what the final plan will be when closure of the quarry happens. Selectman Cabral would like to have town council review their bond to see what the bond does to the town and if the name on the bond is legit. Um, I'm not sure that that happened or not, Joe. It sounds like we did B, but not A. But not B, yeah. It sounds like we did B, so they, 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 they're comfortable with the name. Um, but then it, it, I think that for A, we, if we're going to deal with A, then we really have to we have to converse with you guys I, about right. that because I, I'm, I'm sure that town council can't figure out what you're doing. You have several quarries. You have several quarries in different parts of the, the state, different parts of the, the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is you know what is it that you're looking at? You know, with a decommissioning plan for some of these other quarries. Um, you know, well, and what what it, what is that value? Well, I agree, Joe. But in the, in the same sense that we put forward to you a plan. Okay, the plan is what it is, and, it, and it, we haven't received any comment back as to whether it's an acceptable plan, um, whether you want to see something different. Um, and I think that you know, prior to us going and doing this long exercise of pricing things out and whatnot, uh, we'd like to hear whether the board agrees with the draft plan that was put before them and um, you know and not to take things off the table but you know if um, if we're going to be um, charged a larger bond amount because of the um, the way that we've put together a decommissioning plan then we'll remove the fields or we'll just fill it with water and we'll just keep it the way you know I mean it's just it's we put a plan together that kind of is like, this could be something that the town would have 80 years from now. Um, but that was merely a draft plan to put before you, and it's entirely up to you whether you accept that plan or not. Um, because only you draft, said come you up with something. It's in the draft. It's only a draft. Right. So you said, you know, come up with a plan that we might like. That's what we did. And uh, so, you know, I mean, if it's going to be something that, um, I mean, I think the fence is going to be around the, the quarry hole no matter what, so that's a given. Um, but maybe some of the other uh, sundry facilities and whatnot, maybe off. I mean, it's just, you know, if it's going to raise our bond by, because it's going to cost $5 million to do this in 80 years from now, 
and you want a $5 million bond instead of a million dollar bond, then we'll propose something lesser. I mean, it's just fair. Yes. And, the fence that you got around there now, is that all still intact? Or is there, I know there was some broken down out in back, out by the, the K base out there. There were some fences that wasn't up good enough to keep people out. And I was just wondering if you guys ever yeah, we, back there. Well, you're not going to keep people out necessarily well, if they want to trespass. Um, because, um, but there was some down there that was broken down mm -hmm. that people could get into the back, out by the K base. You know where that is. Yep. I don't know if he's familiar. Yeah. <clears throat> but there was some fences down back there. Mm -hmm. um, and there was, I think, a couple down by the power lines. Yep, yep, this down fence down. back there, yeah. There was a few fences that can be repaired, mm -hmm. showing that you guys had an effort to repair these things. You know, I'm sure the board would go along with the fences being being repaired. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking the new fences. Well, <coughs> maybe eventually fences don't last forever. But at least we would like to see these fences repaired. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if it's up to the board, if that's what they want. I would think that would be the best thing to start with. Start repairing your fences back there and try keeping the little people out that try climbing. It's not uh, them little kids can do anything. And we've had guys, people go in there, try yep. doing, uh, climbing the, the rocks and the fire department have to go in and go save them. And, you know, they have to get in somehow. So, you know, we got to protect them too. Yep. Yeah, you know, and yeah. protect your interest because somebody dies in there, falls in there, and if they came through a fence, and the other little buddy says, "Yeah, we came through that fence. It was down. You guys are liable, you know. So you don't, you don't need that. You don't need any deaths in that place." So how are we going to leave the issue of the uh, of the bond in the decommission plan? Uh, it, it, Mr. Regent makes a, a valid point. If we say it's a million dollars, they'll submit a decommission plan. Value at a million dollars. If we tell them it's insufficient <coughs> and we want more, you know they may or may not increase the bond to reflect that. So, how do we how do we move this item forward? Yeah. Well, we got to come up with a price number one. You're not going out for eighty years. The, the no, they're not going to die. They're yeah. not going to die. You're not going. They're just going to come up. You guys want to come up with a figure. You guys got to come up with a figure to give to them for a bond. Well, we have to come up with a figure. If a million's not enough, you think it's two and a half million, then they're going to come in at two million, whatever. If it's five million, then they'll come in at 2.5 million. Okay. So for the purpose of tonight, because we've got some other things to get to, can, can we put this on the, continue to put this on the agenda to have a discussion on how we're going to address the, the decommissioning plan and the bond? We can put this as a motion, have it at our next meeting. I, I, then they I can come move, back to I us. Move this. We've been talking about it for a year, and there's been no. Well, we already got the money for the million dollar bond, correct? That's what we asked. I'm not sure we get the bond. I'm not comfortable with the form of the bond. Yeah. Mark, well, what do you want? What do you want? What do you figure I, that I, it's worth? Oh, it's worth more than a million dollars. Oh, we know that. I, I couldn't. I couldn't guess, Bob. I, you're, you're better qualified I mean, we, to do that. We were at seven hundred fifty thousand dollars originally. Grossly in seven sixty eight. Yeah. Seven fifty eight. I mean, for, that's know, a twenty year old number. Yeah, and that, that, that was just forward. something that was shot out of the head, out of the basket. That was with uh, Jim Riga, and Jim Riga was here, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> he was the president of PJ uh, Tokong Capaldi or whatever it was, mm -hmm. and uh, that was just a figure that came out between the board members yep. that we thought that would be sufficient enough, but as we go along, it's not sufficient enough. I, I think it's only it was 15 gravel pits in town. Yeah. Now there's only one in you guys. That's more yeah. than two. Pits. Yeah, I understand. Two. Okay. So the, the way that I think that I, I could suggest solving this is I could have a conversation with our consultant. You have I mean, to. That, that's the only way that we're going to get yep. the information that you know, the, the, the board's talking about, is to have them give us information, you know, I, I guess. That's what it, what it encourage. Yeah. yeah, on what it would yeah. be. Hey, Mr. Warren, you're, you're out of Lunenburg? Yep, I help out down in Give Christian decommission too. plan in Lunenburg? Mm, no, we got, we have a similar model. No, they don't, they, they're actually rewriting their, uh, permit, their regulations <laughs> right now, and so it does include the decommissioning plan, but they haven't, they're probably waiting forward. for us to come up with something. They, 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 put this, they keep a close eye on the cushion. Uh, but yeah. you know, again, I mean, we can have Woodward. I mean, you can have Woodward and Kern say what it's going to cost to do this plan, 
but that still doesn't no, really. I don't say that. I say just look at that. So they do this. This is what they do. I mean, they work with these quarries. So just to have a conversation with them and say, listen, what what do you perceive as decomm uh, decommissioning this particular quarry, and and see Secure, securing it, yeah. removing removing the equipment, securing it. Um, yeah, I, I if they ever happen to go out, yeah, the only thing that's going to be left here is a big hole. There's a big hole in the ground, and fence, which and is fence. which is that's surrounded. It. Take all the equipment, all the other See, stuff. Hopefully, they talking. leave us a bunch of stone to give it to the town. That we can fix our homes. <laughs> I think it's I think it's probably closer to five million dollars than a million. I mean, very honestly, and I I don't think the cost of that's significant to PJ Keating. Okay. I suspect well, if you talk to your, your insurance, I mean, relatively significant. I, I, I suspect that the cost of that is not significant to PJ Keating because they're going to look at you and say, "Yeah, we're a very solid company, and the risk of this, of us paying on this bond, is very insignificant. And for that reason, uh, we're going to charge you twenty-five thousand dollars a year for the bond." I'm making up numbers, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I just think we we've been carrying, and I and I, I want town council to look at the bond we've got because what I've seen is just. The, the town council tells me it's fine. I'll shut up. But I, you know, what I'm looking at just looks like something from another time. I think we need town council. That, that was a brand new bond issued by. It was uh, a cover on the old bond, though. It referenced. No, I, I, I don't think you're seeing the, the latest. Maybe, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm the not. Liberty Mutual surety, um, which is, is obviously a very reputable uh, company, on uh, December 12, 2019, issued assurances of a million dollar bond. That's, I mean, what, that's what we asked for originally, a million dollars. Correct. If you people figured that this place is worth more, which it is worth more than a million, a million is dropping a bucket for that place, that's one machine. You know, it, these guys are just looking for a number to bring back to their superiors and say this is what the town of Kushnet wants. Yeah. Is this the, if we can come up with a number, they'll bring it back. It should be the game. Uh, yeah. This, so this, this one page... I just need you to tell me. I mean, this this tells us under what conditions the bond's going to be paid. It says that where where in this document does it tell us verification certificate of the term bond? Looks at like another page. page. Mm -hmm. Not a bond, one million dollars. Yep. But where does it where does it say under these conditions we will pay you a million dollars a percent? Where does it say that? That's what I'm looking for. Dear Town of Bakushnet, when this happens, we will pay you a million dollars. You'd have to jump their bond. The Town of Bakushnet would have to jump a bond. What does right. it mean? Meaning that we have to go chase them for that bond like we did with the garbage. When the guy from Rhode Island backed out, went bankrupt. But the bond, we jumped their bond to pay for the... But the bond should say, Town of Bakushnet, Liberty Mutual Insurance, guarantees that we will pay you a million dollars if this happens, and I don't see that anywhere in this, I'm not sure what this, I mean, if it says it somewhere, I don't see that. I think, you know, it's a, it's a nice piece of paper with stamps all over it and signatures, but I don't, this doesn't tell me anything. Unless I'm, it's here somewhere, it says a million dollars, it's a million, it doesn't tell us how we get a million dollars. The town has to jump it's it. It's right here. License of family bond to adhere to the earth removal bond requirement promulgated by the town of Bakushna on September 11, 1989. 1989. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. It's a renewal term, October 1929 to October 1920. But it's referencing 1989. I want something that starts fresh. We get a brand new, we get a brand new agreement that's got nothing to do with 1989. I want something that, I don't want to reference 1989. 1989 is gone. It's 30 years ago. 30 years ago, 31 years ago. So you're looking for something for something brand, Let's start with a brand new, fresh document. This is what we have to do, is tell them what we brand want. They're going, to, new. they're going to do it. No big deal. All they're going to do is change the description of bonds and put the different date in there. The date. Yep. Have your company get literally mutual it's, it's, to change exactly. the date. It, it might be very easy. No, I understand. We've got a just brand new you, soil removal permit. I want a bond that we spent a lot of time, Mr. Career and the yep. Soil Board and everybody spent a lot of time doing a brand new application and a permit, and we want a bond that backs that, not something that references 1989, which is 30 years ago. 
So okay. Pick up that I want town council to look at it. Okay. 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 I think the 1989 is from the original time. Oh, yeah, okay. Nobody yeah. mutual. Put the bonds. But the point is that the bond says it's good from October 10, 2019 to October 19, 2020. Assuming we can trace it forward from 1989 to the current so, period, we've got to jump it, whatever that means. So as a, well, you have to, you have to. That's I don't know what we, that means, Bob. I don't, I don't know what jumping it means. I don't the Board of Health was in charge of, I'm not getting off the track, but I'm going to tell you what happened. The Board of Health was in charge of garbage. We hired the lowest bidder, which we had to hire yep. in the town. You people, well, not you, but the selectors, we have to go to the lowest bidder. So we had a company out of uh, Rhode Island that would hold it up. They went bankrupt. So we had a bond for them. I forget how much they bought. This is a long time ago. I can't remember that. Now. And we jumped their bond to pay ABC to come in and fill in. Their bond had to pay ABC to come and pick but up the But that shows you've got a good bond. And I just want to make sure we get a good bond. I want yeah. town council. If town council says this is fine, then, then it's uh, fine. So it, it goes back to this memorandum of, of uh, okay. understanding, yeah. which was that was when they were still in a residential zone. And they didn't feel as though that they were, they felt as though they were grandfathered yeah. at that point in time. And I think at they one were, point we believe they were too. Right. Yeah. Right. So the whole. Proper, the the soil board at that point in time wanted a bond for decommissioning, and they disagreed. As I understand it, Til Tilcon at that time disagreed and said, "We don't have to give you anything. We're grandfather." So there was there was a, and that's in there. They went back and forth. They had had a dispute about it, and rather than going and litigating it between the town and Tilcon Capaldi, they came up with this memorandum of <coughs> agreement. Which was basically voted on at a town meeting that that's which was accepted September 11th, 1989, right? And then at that point, that's what that bond was attached to was this whole agreement. So they've actually updated the agreement. Okay, they have PJ Keating all written on on top of it, but they've also moved so so far along that in that understanding. They, P.J. Keating will comply with number nine acknowledgement. So there's a discussion about the fact that now they're not grandfathered because they've been converted, the property's been converted over to industrial. So technically, don't, don't really, they probably don't even need the memorandum of, in, uh, of uh, understanding because they're industrial property. Because they're industrial property, they're not grandfathered. They fall underneath our soil conservation bylaws and any obvious border, border health laws plus anything else. But even if that's the case and they're not grandfathered, they're still agreeing to everything on our permit, which covers everything from EPA right through to our Board of Health stuff. Um, so even their new update, it doesn't say Tilcon Capaldi mm -hmm. anymore, this is PJ Keating. Yeah is now covering all the bases that we've really essentially asked them to cover and the bond is referring back to the the memorandum of understanding and and that's the legality yeah i i mean it, there was I, a, I just and is it reasonable to ask town council to look at the bond no and no, and, 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 and let me bond. make this motion how yeah. about we have I'll town have council look at the bond if you guys have to Call your lawyer, see if you want to change that September 11, 1989 to January 1st, 2020. And that makes everything good. Does everybody be happy with that? Okay. Yeah, we've got a good bond, right? and I want to yeah. look at the amount of the nope. bond as well. But I want, to, I I want to make sure we've got a good bond. Well, this so is the initial bond now for a million. Yep. You can't check them to five million because we're already agreed nope. from let's start, let's start with that. All right, so that addresses okay. part B. Part A is still outstanding, which is the we haven't blessed a decommissioned plan that you can then go put a price tag on. That's right. We have to get no feedback on that threat, the particular plan. Um, I'll, be, I'll give that. The only thing I can do with that is, is give it to a consultant to look at. And if that's what the board wants, that's what I'll do. Because that's the only way we're going to get a solid, concrete answer. Um, or at least have some sort of information for the board yeah. versus what P.J. Keating is, is and I, offering. And I, I think it's important, I know the writing was small on the plan, but it's important to remember that in, in this, we say that we're going to remove all equipment, it's going to be cleared, the site's going to be cleared, um, so the concern that, you know, it would, uh, at, the, at the 
the end of the day when the quarry's finished uh, that we would leave anything out there. No, we can't because it's in here. Um, so there's, you know, those, those stipulations are already in this decommissioning plan as well. I don't think um, we could see any of that last time, though. I, there was, I don't think we could see any of that last time on that document. I don't think we had the... Well, we had fencing and grasses and different yeah. fields. And different yeah, it was all, it was all on there. This I'll hasn't changed at all. I'll give it to the winter income. Yep. Okay, okay. okay. we've got a motion on the floor for Mark. Yep. Second. Can we have a second? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. We're going to get a hold of the Woodward and Karen and have them look into it. And then... Uh, no, this is KP Law. For the bond. Yep. We'll have them look through all that. Yep. Okay. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now back to the decommissioning. Chief wanted some kind of thing. Uh, that, if you want to take out the grass fields or whatever. Well, you know, we'll just let me... Up. Let's see what the price I, comes back. I understand okay. what the discussion is. So, I mean, I'll... I'll hand it over to them. I'll have a discussion with them and let them put their information together. I mean, I'm sure they've dealt with this. You know, before this, this whole board came about, it was Bluestone Quarry, it was Warren Brothers, it was Tilcon Capaldi, it was Tilcon Cambino, what the hell the name was, Cambino. I mean, it's gone through a dozen hands already. The same property. The same property. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I can go way back, right? The thing is that we never had a price tag on anything years ago until um, Jim Riga came about as president of PJ Keating or whoever mm -hmm. took on Capaldi or whatever. And that's when we first put the price tag on things because we only had gravel pits in town because this soil board goes with, with open pits and mines. You're considered an open pit and a mine. And that's where we came up with a price tag of open pits and mines. But when the gravel exhausted, we had to go in and make sure that we had two-thirds slopes on, on gravel banks that abutted other people's property, because you know the banks, they dug out. We had to have four feet of soil that down to the water table. It had to be four feet above the, the water table with, with soils. They couldn't go beyond. And, uh, and then we decided that we had to post a bond just in case if somebody from out of town came in, we had contractors from Timbuktu coming in picking up our gravel. Then they took off and then they left us with an empty empty things, empty bank or ground all uneven, the banks weren't cut down, not loomed and seeded. And we had a fiasco going on here for a while. Then we came up with the board. Uh, the board we had was basically farm people from the town, you know. And they didn't understand the the meaning of the quarry and all that. So that was a totally different situation with a stone quarry <coughs> compared to a gravel pit. You know, that's when we came up with figures of how much it would cost to, you know, do something like that. We never thought of Keating or PJ Keating or Warren Brothers, whoever it was at the time, that they would, would ever fold up because that's a money making place. You know, as long as you guys got stone going down, and we gave you guys permission to go deeper. The board did. And uh, the thing is that it's a money-making place. I don't think that this P.J. Keating company would ever fold up. They may sell out to another outfit, bigger outfit. Somebody might have a lot of money to buy them out. Uh, you know, the place is worth a lot of money. You know, and there's a lot of headaches to go with that place. <laughs> you guys know you were in it. So, you know, it's not all peaches and cream that you guys are making peaches and cream, man. You, <coughs> it's a big expense. I know what expense is. I'm in a contract for this. And I, went to ex I know what expense is out today, you know. And the thing is that we, we don't, we're not trying to bust your cookies or anything else. But, you know, the man's in the banking business. He deals with homes and buying and selling and mm -hmm. properties. He knows what he's basically talking about. But we're going to get our, our attorneys together and come up with something, let you guys know, and, and I'm sure if they say it's worth $5 million to close it up, we'll just back it up to you and tell you what it's going to be worth. Then you're going to have to bring it back to your superiors, either Lunenburg or down in Ireland, whoever mm -hmm. owns this place now, you know, mm -hmm. and you're going to have to make that decision. If they don't make the decision, they don't want to go over with sand, you're not going to be able to operate. Very simple. And I'm sure they're not going to close that place down for a $5 million bond, because bonds are not that expensive. 
know, we, we have to pull bonds in every town there is. No, I, I understand. I, I, mean, it's I not... just walk in a Kushner company, I got to have a $2 million bond. Mm -hmm. $2 million just to walk in the joint. Yeah. You? Yeah. Uh, well, the company. Yeah, no, I, I'm just saying, $2 million. $2 million. Right. Just to walk in their property, you know? So I'm just saying. Yeah, but, but, and I, and thank because you, uh, I could fall down and hurt myself and then sue for $20 million. Mm -hmm. The multi billion dollar outfit. Yeah. You know? But just, I, can I take off on one? I mean, the point he's making, I think, is, is the point I'm trying to convey, and I don't want to, you know, I'm not trying to be antagonistic, but I just, you know, we should do this right. I mean, it's you've got, you've got to agree it's a significant operation there, and this should be done right. And part of my frustration is I'm not really feeling it's done right, but that I'm feeling we're settling for, we're settling. And I don't want to settle. I want Copeland and Page. I want to make sure this is done right and mm -hmm. done right now and that it's right for the next 20 years. And mm -hmm. um, and that's all And that's all I'm looking for. And we understand. That. And, and that's that's fine. And I looked um, at the bond documents. I was like, ugh, what, ugh, what is this? Okay. Well, you have to yell at me to life. Um, well, but as you go along, things are going to keep going higher. So if, this, if we say that the Copeland and Page says this place is worth $5 million to close it up, now, five years from now, it's probably going to be worth eight yeah, million dollars. That's what I want to make the keeps point going is, up not, and up and up. It's not a, a straight, you know. It's not Woodward and Currents comes back and says it costs ten million dollars to close it down, right. okay, and do do the fields and, and fill right. it with water, put the fence around it. Well, we don't think it's appropriate that all of a sudden the bond is ten million dollars just because Woodward and Curran came up with the price. There's a lot of factors involved that are not being considered. If you don't consider the, the value of everything that's in there now, uh, the trade-offs, the, the, and that's why when we were discussing it earlier, I, again, and I'm not, my, my recollection is we, we were sort of like, yeah, that's a really tough, convoluted equation to get to the end of the day at. Um, so we would argue that Woodward and Curran can come back as the consultants for the town and say it's $20 million, you know. Yeah. Um, but is that fair to us to put a $20 million bond on us? And as Mr. Medeiros is saying, 10 years from now with inflation, now it's 25, now it's 30, now it's 40. Um, so, you know, it's got to be done that, in a realistic manner. May not be sure. significant. I mean, I, we're not there yet, but I mean, that yeah. cost may not be significant to you. So. I don't. And I would he carries agree. a two million dollar bond. I, 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 I would. I would agree with place. you. I, I would agree that the 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 bond itself is not uh, an onerous price. It cost, um, but I think that there there is um, you know um, precedent. Um, I think there's an argument for um, fairness um, and and reality check um, because. You know, if we're looking at 80 years and it increases over 80 years and that, that price every year, then then it becomes a substantial amount of money. And if it increases every five years due to inflation and this and that, then um, then it does. So that's why, again, I, I work for a consulting firm just like Woodward and Curran for years and years and years. We put these packages together. We can tell you what it's going to cost. It's not tough to do. We could do it ourselves. Whether or not you agree with us, you know, and maybe we might do a fact check to see if we agree with Woodward and Curran. Sure. We'd be happy to do it. Um, but, you know, it's not a it's it's not a level deal that they come up with a price and then all of a sudden that becomes the new bond amount. It just doesn't yeah, I don't think it gels that way. And I think that's where Woodward and Curran can't answer the legal questions, the le legal aspects of it. Uh, and Copeland and Page can assist you in that um, because it, it, it's just not a, you know. Well, the bond has not increased in 30 years, right? It moved from 780 to a million dollars. It took 30 years for it to move 20%. Well, yeah. But so, I mean, so we weren't coming in offering uh, higher and bond. We were, and we weren't asking. We weren't asking. <laughs> so, we weren't asking. But as soon as you did, we did. And you know we might if the if Woodward and Curran says the value of closing the pit is ten million dollars, we may say all right, well, you know we'll weigh the risk and we'll say okay, you know this is a solid company. We don't need ten, but we want five. Okay. Yeah. We no, you no. know so there's I mean there's no conclusion, but we need to get more. A million's not enough. He's got two million. A million's okay. a million's not. You know a million's not enough. 
No, and I, yeah, and I, 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 again, I, I don't want to go over the point. We can't come up with a figure. We don't know. Ourselves. We, we, have we, to we have know a million is not enough. We don't know what we don't know what it is. We have. We just started we'll off with that yep. because we. I know. 20, 30 years ago, right? Well, yeah. what, what are you going to do? You know, know, that's what it was worth. You know, thirty years. And that's ago. really that's really where the discussion going back to um, your predecessors. That's where we left off. Is mm -hmm. We were going to jump into a million and then come up with. I mean, that was the whole thought, come up with some sort of idea on how this place is going to get closed and then kind of put a number on it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's still following through with what we did. But Years, the ago, only have, years ago, their permits were only 25 bucks to operate yeah. that. No, 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 no. 25 know. bucks, that's and a load of uh, one, one ton of stone, yeah. 3 eight stone, you know. And we're, I'm we're just not, saying. We're not going to quibble over it. Yeah, Small yeah. amounts of money, by all means, no. and we want to cover you as best we can. But we just we just want to keep in mind that it's not what Woodward and Cohen says. All of a sudden, becomes gospel. You know, we'll get the number. We'll talk again. Yeah. Well, okay. if Woodward Thank and Cohen comes up for the trigger, we're still the the, the colonels over here. Yeah. That's going to say, well, we think that's crazy amount of money, okay. and we can always draw yeah. it. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're not. I'm I'm business friendly because I'm we're business people. Mm -hmm. Mark was a businessman, you know, and these people are business people too. Yeah. But, you know, I, I like business. That brings people to work in the town. We hire people from the town to work. They pay taxes in the town. We don't have to worry about schools. Don't have to worry about more this and more that in town. So I like business. That's me. I'm a business. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. But, Sorry that it took so long. But the, nope, the thing is, right. we'll, we'll have it. Go, we'll have some kind of point. figures for you guys, and maybe your company <coughs> can look up and see what the heck it would probably cost for you guys to close it up. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we'll combine the two figures together, and we can come up with a figure. Yeah, I would you, think that's the most logical way. You get a little common sense. You can't just say, "I want fifty million dollars." Mm -hmm. The hell, fifty Jim, million dollars don't grow on trees. While we still have a, while we still have a full house, can we jump? the next item on the agenda of the draft air inspection protocol and go to the complaints protocol? Sure thing. Um, it, is that okay with you, gentlemen? Certainly. So, so let me hear. If, if, I don't think the minutes reflect it, but my memory is when we met as a much bigger group. November? If we missed December and January. Uh, yes. October. 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 Uh, we were talking about complaints that have been received regarding the condition of the road in front of the driveway. That stretch of South Main Street from if you're heading north from the beginning of your driveway to the end of LNS's driveway. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was under the impression that uh, before the end of 2019, there was a there was talk about bringing that down getting it fixed the right way down to whatever the lowest level is so told, yeah. and, and just kind of getting that done. Well, we're talking about co-planing it and putting... Whatever it was. Yes, yes they have to go to the state. That was offered to the state and the state declined. Right. See, the, and state, was, the yes. state was supposed to repair the, re redo this road okay. last hold year. Hold on. Go, can you go back to what you just said? There's, that was offered to the state, and we did not commit, get permission to do that work. The we state did get, denied... It's the state road... They have their own, you know, specifications, which we're well aware would of. Would the what state have paid for it? No, the state would not have. Paid you would have paid for it. Yes. And the Commonwealth of Massachusetts said no. Yes. So that's the my understanding from my from Andy Brewer. Okay. And, and our discussions so, with District Five. So let's just again, th th this is you know, uh, this is going to be put on YouTube, and folks in town will have the ability to to click this. So let's mm -hmm. let's just make sure that we're drawing the, the complete circle here. Mm -hmm. So residents and visitors to town, town equipment, business equipment that is subjected to uh, a pretty rough patch in front of the plant on South Main Street mm -hmm. have asked all of us in different ways, shapes, and forms to try to get that addressed. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's kind of tied to the credibility of the plant. Mm -hmm. Like, how can we trust you to run an asphalt plant on South Main Street when you can't keep South Main Street paved? Correct? Yes, Chief. So you came here and kind of made the commitment to us that by December it would, by the end of 2019, it would be addressed. With the you, caveat. You that turned to the permission. Commonwealth, mm -hmm. who controls that road, offering to pay for it, not put it on the Commonwealth's taxpayers, on the town's taxpayers, but you're going to do that in kind. Mm -hmm. In a type of repair that that road, had, that section of road hasn't seen probably since it was made. Going down that <laughs> car. Mm -hmm. And the Commonwealth of Massachusetts said no. 
to District 5, from my understanding, said no. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I got to contradict this now. From the main gate going in, I had them years ago co plane that, dig up that road, and put another layer over it, all the way up to the Century House. And Keating did mm -hmm. nothing. No, it wasn't Keating, it was. Um, if we, if we could do it, but you're we not would contradicting do it. anything. They they did that back then. The request right. is now. Why are they not saying, Why are they saying in the state up in district up yeah. in Taunton saying you can't do it? I'm going to find out. I'm going to. I, I don't know why. Um, there was. So you did, guys, will, need, you guys will co-plane that we, out we there. Did, we did. We did need that. to get the gas line in also. Yeah. So that would have disrupted that process. <laughs> so that's taken a little bit longer. But the offer remains on the table that we will do that work out there should we get permission to do that. Um, we've already discussed it at our operations meetings. Um, we certainly have the equipment, we'd the expertise, and the that. asphalt. We'd, so. we'd, love, we'd love to help push that. Yeah, so I mean, to us, um, so it, to, it, it's, you know, in the scheme yeah. of things, it's an overall relatively small yeah. job. So seeing that we're, we're talking about this, seeing that we've opened the door about the, how the Commonwealth owns that stretch of South Main Street, mm -hmm. um, during the, the warmer months, you were running the street sweeper, mm -hmm. and you haven't for for a few months, uh, for a few weeks at least. We just had a lot last week. I know last week when it, we had uh, the road was pretty dirty. The problem with this time of the year is they can't yeah. put water out, right? And it's going to freeze, right? And what happens is if the sweeper goes up the street without the water, it just puts it all in the air and it's all yeah. over the place. Yeah. yeah. So what we're doing, we're trying to keep the driveways clean. Mm -hmm. Actually, got them coming into our facility. And we're hosing off all we can yep. into the quarry to stop it from getting out on the street. So as one who responds to motor vehicle crashes, I thank you for not putting extra ice on the road, uh, <laughs> especially in that neighborhood. You know, that's a, that's a tough section. I understand that, but let's make sure that the folks at home understand. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not just I. We understand that the, the reason why the street sweeper is slowed is because of the temperature, the water that's used, the ice that's created. Uh, what does the Commonwealth think of you folks using the street sweeper? Um, I, I don't, I can't honestly say. I've never heard a comment on it. I can't honestly say that. I don't know. Um, You're doing them the what, favor. What, what they would say. And, and, you know, and let me go back to the paving also. Um, the, that, is, that offers on the tail, okay? And it has been and it will continue to be. Um, assuming we get permission from MassDOT. Um, and the time of year. So at this point, it would be spring. Um, but the we did have the issue with the gas line, which I, I just I forgot, because the other source line had to come in. We didn't we wouldn't want to pave it and then rip it right back up again. Um, so that that could have been a, um, a complementary issue of you know. Well, conceivably, it. you could have started <coughs> and stopped. Yeah. Where the gas line is. Yeah. So wait for it, that to be done and then. At this off. point, all I can tell you is that I know that offer remains on the table. And if it didn't get done in the timeliest fashion as we would have wanted, and you would have wanted, then we apologize. Um, but it did take longer to get Eversource in to, to help us put that line in. And then we had anticipated as well. And then we run into the winter months, we're not making asphalt. So. We'd love to help push that if we can. Mm -hmm. Well, you yep. find out that can't make asphalt now, anyway, it's all about. But in terms yeah. of, oh, oh, all right, so you can't just do the repair now if you want. No, oh, no. We, can't, we, no we have to wait till okay. April. April's going to come quick, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I can say one thing. I've seen the potholes out there this summer, and I talked to Mr. Menise, yep. your foreman, yep. and I told him, I said, well, you talk to your boss and tell him to get out these things bad because <clears throat> my neighbor fell in there with a bike. One of the potholes, and I told mm -hmm. him the kid got hurt pretty bad. She didn't want to go tell you people, but the kid got hurt bad. She was all mocked up and all. Uh, so they went out there and put some mix in the room. But it's very dangerous for a man to go out there with a whereabouts mix into the middle of South Main Street, which they fly by there like 100 miles an hour. You know? So the other selectman, in charge of the police department, if these guys need a, a somebody, a Cruise a car to sit there for 20 minutes just to watch these guys patching the road for, for the town. 
Yeah. It would be up yeah. to the select. Yeah, we'll call the chief we'll up, and I think we'll the new chief. We have no problem doing it. Even yeah. with District Five, if we can, I mean, we working through our, you know, our legislative delegation to to get that done. I mean, I just I can't imagine why they say no. Yeah. No. Well, ironically, we yeah, we filled the potholes and. A day later, Mastow was out filling potholes along South Main Street. So. <laughs> that was no joke. What was that again? State police. Sorry. We, we, state we, police we filled the it. potholes yep. in front of our, in front, yep. um, probably maybe a month ago now. And uh, ironically, the next day, Mastow was filling potholes along South Main Street. Come on. <laughs> I'd be ashamed if I say I filled those potholes the way those guys did it. What? The guy, wait, PJ Keating did it? Oh, well. I mean, that, that, that yeah. throw it on the They had a shovel and they <laughs> sounded it down with a shovel. It's a shame the way he patch it. Patch it. Patch it. Yeah. Holes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this individual is by himself on that road. Huh? <laughs> okay. Keep you all set. I am. Thank you. Good point. Cool. Okay, uh, complaint protocol. Mm -hmm. uh, complaint protocol. Mm -hmm. Review of matters presented, voters may be taken. Now, uh, yeah. they, they submitted some information to us yeah. about that. And we, we have that. All, we that have that. Time. Wanted to log that all in already. <clears throat> okay, we'll just go over this real quick. You guys have a sheet yourself. Um, On a complaint protocol, it comes from you guys, PJ Keen. Oh yeah, yeah, we have that. Sure. Okay, I'm just going to read it out. PJ Keen contacts a 24-hour answering service. Answered with live people that take a message, including name, number, time of call and reason for call. The number is 8187-811-6305. And I'll give that number one more time. 877-811-6305. The message is then relayed by mail to Michael Warner, Quarry Site Manager. And uh, he's uh, Michael Warner at PJ Keating. Dot com. This number is 508-612-5527. Can I throw a number at you? I'm sorry. I've got 508-283-9575. I've given this number to residents who have complaints. Okay. It's in my thing is PJ Keating Complaints. Okay. So somebody gave me this and saved it. So 508-283-9575? That, that is not... No. No. That, there was, there that, was a hiccup at some particular point in time yeah. where it went offline. The new number is this one here. All right, so we better, we better give it to everybody. I've been giving people this number. the last couple of months. Okay, it's 877 877 811 811 6305. 877 811 6305. At some point, I, I put that number no, in my that phone. That was the number that originally came across, and then they changed it. Okay. It was really a hiccup. They, we, we found out the hard way. <laughs> And we brought it to their attention. Right, I just I just gave this number to somebody. Okay, now okay, we've got go ahead. we've got other names here. Tanya Taylor, she's the asphalt uh, operation manager. It's at Tanya Turner at pjkeating.com. We've got Douglas Vigno. Yes, that's enough. Uh, engineer compliance manager. He's Douglas Virginia at pjkeating.com. Robert Robinson's VP Aggregate Operation, Robert Robinson at pgkeating.com. Carl Turgeon, Preventive <coughs> Maintenance, Carl Turgeon at pgkeating.com. And Daniel Chockel, mm -hmm. uh, HMA Plant Superintendent, Daniel Chockel at pgkeating.com. Once the email is received correctly, we will determine which of us is to follow up directly with the individual that called the hotline. And the matter appears to be urgent. The individual will be contacted within two hours time frame during working hours. That will be during the day. If the matter is not urgent, the individual will be contacted within a working day. That would be probably the following day mm -hmm. after complaint. <clears throat> working hours? Working hours is well, 24 hours. This, working hours. You're not going to get none of these guys at that plant. Oh, you'd be surprised. Oh, you can? Oh, we get, you know, these guys more than I do, but they, they get calls. Well, I, I used to day. call the Jeff, 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 whoever was before him, and, yeah. mm -hmm. and if I had a problem with dust, when I was going by and I seen a lot of dust, I'd call him up and say, hey, you got a lot of dust up there, let's close it up. Okay, mm -hmm. by minutes, so that place was closed down, wetted down the hoppers and all. So, I mean, they're trying to do the best. You guys can't be there 24-7, so if there's a complaint, Call you guys, whoever's in charge. Mm -hmm. You know, just make a phone call to the to the 
whoever's running the place at night or whatever, mm -hmm. I do so, what they have to do. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, Chairman, this is this is on your end. This is how you would handle complaints that come into you. Right. So, the board of selectmen uh, had asked me to to put together some thoughts, uh, which have been drafted. Uh, and, and it's continuing to be worked on for how the town responds. Because right? we get individual phone calls, Board of Health, uh, the, the <coughs> executive assistant to the Board of Selectmen gets multiple calls, uh, fire department gets calls, they get calls as individuals. So we've never had a system of tracking those. Mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of a, a one-off. If you called me, I would look into it, call you, get back to the, the homeowner. And more importantly, the Board of Selectmen who ultimately sign the soil removal license uh, and issue the land use license aren't kept in the loop on the nature of the complaints, how the, the complaints are being resolved. So we're, we're in the course of developing now and will be ready to roll out publicly um, at the February 11th meeting mm -hmm. uh, a nuisance abatement plan. Uh, for the town of Akushnet, that we will work with cooperatively with you folks. <coughs> it, it's going to require some input on your part. So the way that it's envisioned, uh, Mr. Chairman, is the, the town's website would be used as the portal. Uh, there's currently on the website a, a tab uh, where you can report a pothole, and that generates an email that goes to the appropriate department head. So the way that this is envisioned in a draft way uh, is something similar. Uh, a neighbor complains about noise at 11 p.m. from the asphalt plant. Uh, then pick up the phone, they can call, they might get a hold of y'all guys and leave a voicemail, but we don't know about it. Mm -hmm. And we want to know about those. Okay. So we would be directing the, said, the residents of town to the website to use this very user friendly three or four questions identify yourself, contact information, what is the nature of the concern. They send it to us. It comes to a designee appointed by the Board of Selectmen just for kind of managing <coughs> and to a designee of, of your facility for the same purpose. Excuse me. We then, that person would then kind of uh, manage it on the town side to see which board, which department uh, needs to be apprised if there's a history of this, things of that sort. Uh, and the idea is within 72 hours, the town's representative P.J. Keating's representative have talked, have discussed it. It may be as simple as an explanation, mm -hmm. uh, or it may be a you know pretty significant neighbor complaint, but one that we now have uh, inputted into our system, we've managed, we've worked out a resolution, and more importantly, we can report back to the Board of Health, <laughs> the Planning Board, and the Board of Selectmen on a regular basis what complaints we're hearing, if any, and how they're being resolved. So uh, this is this is excellent, and this has been useful in the past. But especially with the relocation of the asphalt plant closer to uh, um, residential structures, mm -hmm. we want to be ready for a system that responds, tracks, and can be managed. We, we want by the to know town. what the complaints are. Correct. We, from ours, we want to know what the complaints are. Right. Yeah. It's That's nice so that you're getting them, but we want to know as well. Okay. You know? Well, we sure. stressed that before that when they get a complaint, they notify the board health office here that they got their complaint that well, we can log in on my log. I have a log book with her. Are yeah. you trying? You when DJ Keating's talking to you and letting you know what the complaint is? No. no. When I have a complaint from a neighbor, I don't know how the heck people get my number. They got my number. Mm. They call me and there's a problem. I call Wanda immediately. She logs it in the book. I says, where's Joe? He's, he's here. I says, have Joe go out and check it right away. Mm. That's how we get our, our complaint sheet. Yeah. So if I see something, I call Wanda and tell her, Wanda, I got a complaint about dust. But we don't know what their volume of complaints We don't know what their volume is. They were supposed to contact us on every complaint that they got through their phone line. Yeah. So the way that this but would right work now, now but is the Wanda thing is, would Chief, input it into the But the, the thing report. is, Chief, a lot of people up in that area that live in that area are older people. And they don't have computers. Well, you know, we're, we're not going to hang up on them if they make a phone call. Yeah. And if they call the Board of Health, they call the Fire Department, they call the Board of Selectmen, yeah. and they don't have access to the portal, then, you know, we'll develop a form that can be filled out, and then someone in those departments is responsible for entering it into the portal so that it okay. can, that, it can roll fine. from here. So good. we might finally be able to throw a lasso yeah. over all of these and, and kind of coordinate them. 
And now, and I truly mean, some of these will just be explained away. You know, I still get an average of one or two phone calls a week regarding blasting. And the, the resident who calls will get the video of the blast and the seismic reports with an explanation of whether or not the code was violated or not. After that, that's the explanation. There's no enforcement action because the code wasn't violated. But it helps them to understand, you know, A, they had a concern they brought to the attention of the town. It was uh, uh, um, acknowledged, looked into, and here's the response. And although they still think the earth shook, in, you know, violently, they're at least a little more satisfied that someone paid attention to it and was able to respond. So some of them will be complaints. And, and I think we need to be ready. Uh, all the, the, the town departments need to be ready to, uh, to have a system in place to work cooperatively, co cooperatively with you. So we start those conversations next week, kind yes. of uh, off informal back and forth to see you know, what, what we're proposing, how you would respond. Um, but uh, Mr. Chairman of the Soil Board, Mr. Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, uh, I think the idea is for on February 11th to roll that out publicly and have that up and ready uh, when the season begins in March. Is there anything that we can have like that we can post it, you know, like on the... We'll post it every No, on a piece of paper and then we can put it in front of the camera and let people you got see it. it. I mean, you got it. We'll it's for the town residents. Yeah. I mean, that way they can see it like we, if we have some communicable disease coming around or a flu or something or mosquitoes or mm -hmm. anything, we usually have paper with bold letters and we put it up for, for the taxpayers to see and yeah. they can, we hold it up for a few minutes, that way they can sure. take the information down. And if we can do that... Um, we'll post that that way sure. over the year. Better than just talking about it, put it on a piece of paper, let them see it. You know, you design something up, we'll put it up. And if I could just throw two cents, it, it's just a fabulous idea because realistically, if we start to get, you know, from the guy that generally has to run around and deal with the complaints, if we're getting a lot of complaints and we're seeing all of them, we can dial in on it a little better between us and, 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 and the quarry and, and figure out why and how and you know, do the preventative maintenance uh, ahead of time so we can hopefully... I think it would be beneficial to both of us, for sure. And uh, we, we do respond to the complaints we receive. We try to do it immediately. We know no one wants to be ignored, so that's the worst thing. So. But the problem is when the taxpayer comes up and says, you guys should have that complaint. We don't have it here. You guys got the complaint. You guys were supposed to turn around and send it to us. Okay. Either fax it to this office, mm -hmm. to Wander, or whoever's in the office, or to Joe, faxes the complaint with, just to keep it on file to cover us. We work with paper trails. Without a paper trail, you go to court, you have nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. This is how we run this office in here, all with paper trails. Without a paper trail, you go to court, you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. So we need paper trails. Okay. Well, well. In your behalf and our behalf. We don't want to go into court and then we'll look like a bunch of monkeys. Mm -hmm. Okay? If I go into court, I want to have a lot of paperwork with me, just to show that we have paperwork. So if you guys got a complaint, there's no big deal. Get this office a call. Send her a fax during the day. She'll get the fax. We'll give you the fax numbers. We want to give you the fax number. Our fax machine is open 24-7. Mm -hmm. Give us a fax. We'll put it on file. If we have to, Joe will go out and uh, go check, talk to the people. And maybe pick one of you guys up and go out and see the people. Mm -hmm. and get things ironed out. Yeah. If we don't know about it, we can't do nothing. We can't help you guys. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll be happy to use the same form that you're putting together, Chief. And, we'll work uh, together. Yeah. You get if, we can, together. if we can PDF it over to you, Wanda, that would be yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But basically, the fax that, machine anymore. we don't want to bust, bust butts over here, but you know, we just want to make things go smooth. Mm -hmm. If it's not smooth and blocking this guy and blocking that guy, no good. You can't no, run things. I, I agree. You can't run them smooth. I agree, Mr. Chairman. That's, yeah. that's, we want to make it as smooth sailing and responsive as, yeah. as possible. That's our goal. Yeah. You know, we got to take care of our taxpayers here also. Mm -hmm. I know none of you guys live around here, but the people that live here, they're here 24 7. We got to take care of them too. That's my priority. These people pay my freight, pay his freight, pay their freight. They're not all our freight. We get it back them up. They're 100. percent We get it back up. Yeah, we so, I, I'm sure you guys understand. Can we move on? Yep. Draft air inspection protocol. Is that where we are? Yes. 
Yeah. Okay, protocol uh, debunked from wood, by Woodward and Curran, PJ Keating, review, review of matters presented. Okay, PJ Keating had, had we given the draft to them. They had <coughs> comments on it. Uh, we have the comments here okay. from PJ Keating. Um, I had also submitted, just we can go through these so we can talk about it, but I had submitted this stuff back to Woodard and Curry, the, the designer of this, mm -hmm. um, to go over some of it. Okay. Um, to see how they felt, you know, about you know, in regards to your comments. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I can comment more as we go along if you want to just uh, take a look at um, them. Yeah, I mean, I'd be interested. Um, you mean to take a look at Woodward and Kearns? Oh, yeah. well, you would. Uh, we, we, oh, well, we put yeah, together. Yeah, I sent it to them, and she yeah. just gave me a call. Okay. And just talking to me about it. So, um, so we, yeah, we reviewed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did. I, I was the author of it. Um, <laughs> The, and so I, I want to preface the discussion by saying that, you know, there were just certain things that we picked up on minor that we don't need to discuss at all. Um, and then some of the larger issues that we really wanted to pinpoint or pin down a little bit more succinctly. Um, and I guess I would start off with the opacity discussion that um, Joe and I did have a conversation about this. Um, and not to, to speak for Joe at all, but we our feeling on the opacity um, monitoring per se is a couple of different things. For for one thing, the even the EPA methods that are that are referenced acknowledge the fact that it's a very highly subjective determination. So what you're doing is you're looking at the smoke coming out of the stack and you're saying, oh boy, that's uh, blocking out 10% of the, you know, the sun or 15%. Now, and I think we, well, I think many of us would agree that all of us might come up with a different percentage. <laughs> um, and I think that the EPA also agrees that it's very difficult to do. They have a certification program that you can go through. We have folks on staff that are certified. Um, if um, if the opacity is going to continue to be, and you wanted it really as an earmark, not to, not to. We, we didn't want to get into a uh, so-called, uh, you know, back and forth, you know, oh, you know because by the time you, you look at it, then the opacity changes, right? right. So um, it's a difficult subjective determination that uh, we didn't want to get into a, a back and forth with the town on constantly, you know, the opacity was worse today or not. Um, so we're just saying that we, we think it's highly subjective um, and that we don't really see the purpose of it, per se. Um, the issue is on site, but largely. Um, it's not an issue where it's blocking people's views of things or, you know, the smoke goes up, it dissipates, the opacity is gone. So smoke, smoke or dust? What are we we're talking about? The, dust, I think. Okay. No, smoke. smoke. Smoke from the stacks. Yeah, blue smoke, basically, it's called. Okay. Um, and that, um, so we just kind of question whether is it's there something that talks about fugitive emissions, emissions not emitted directly from a stack? I assume that was dust in the operation. Well, you're saying so, it's so again, that's it's just the dust is con controlled in the, in the stack house, okay, in bags. The dust don't come out the stack, that just comes the vapors from the yeah. So, this the the part of this seems to be talking about just dust generated in the operations of the facility, dust. So from okay. stockpiles, well, dust from production, dust from whatever sort. So in order to, the, the, this is the way that this is intended, and this is what I, I think, in order to, to set up, and this is the way Woodard and Cohen look, in order to talk about how you're going to inspect the quarry, at some particular point in time, you got to talk about opacity. <coughs> and it's not... We're not going to be qualified. Maybe that's something down down the road that we go and that we take. But it, it it's not. That's not what the intent is. The intent is to get the inspector, the person that's going to be using this on a regular basis, to have some background information on what they're doing. Absolutely, in no way is it our intent to go back and forth with with PJ Keaton about this. Maybe just to have some sort of basic knowledge and say, hey, 
you know, maybe today, you know, Doug, you, can you take a look at that? It looks like it, it, something's not right. Mm -hmm. That was the intent of it. It's not to try to get our inspector um, or our person that's going to be there certified and out there rigorously watching your passing. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna be at PJ Keating inspecting and working within the quarry, it was just, hey, we got to have this conversation. This is what the intent is. That is really the way that way that it was addressed to me. That's the way that the intent was. In no way, shape, or form, and, and again, on record, the way that Woodard and Curran said, no way, shape, or form is the intent to try to regulate you in that fashion because we're not able to, realistically. That's an EPA thing that you guys <coughs> probably can have that conversation and say, you know, that looks a little, that looks a little, you know, like something's not right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the that was the intent. So that was the that's the first part of the conversation inside that inspection protocol. It's just yeah. to say, you're the inspector. You know, this is this is opacity. This is what it is. Yeah. It yeah. says it's tough. It says here it's tough to do. Absolutely, absolutely. And it, that's the intent. They put that in there specifically to say that it's not. And, and again, it's very subjective. Yep. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I will say if. If the folks on the ground and the plant, and they see weird stuff coming out, right. they know something's not sure. going right. Because sure. it's, it's, uh, it, it, it is you know, within the specifications of the, uh, the uh, industrial activities, the, the, the manufacturers, what they purchase, the, all the stuff that we buy, um, they're supposed to meet their requirements as well. So, you know, um, so I think that that you know, probably enough said yeah. that. Right. To do our job, we just got to have some basic knowledge. And Understood. Yep. 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 Just yep. Okay. Anything else? In the, you just feels like things we should be looking for and inspecting for. Anything else in there that was an objection? You said you got the notes. Uh, yep. Um, you had uh, the kickoff meetings were concerns. Right. So when I think of a kickoff meeting, I think of um, you know, you're going on. A, you're huddling together before you start a construction project, right? And that's a kickoff meeting. And you're, you get your all your groups together, and this is what you're going to do, this is what you're going to be responsible for. And then, you know, we have um, we have tailgate meetings every single day with our employees. Um, but, oh yeah, oh yeah, well, there's no, no beverages or anything served, but um, the, all, all I was asking there, Joe, was that it said, you know, kickoff meetings, um, and it didn't give a, a frequency of when kickoff meetings might occur. Um, I, I guess the whole the, the, the concern is, or the issue is, that we realize that we're going to have uh, an individual on site and, and checking things out and whatnot. Um, that if um, if it's expected that we're going to have our own person dedicate each inspection period with that person. Uh, it takes the person away from what they're they're doing, um, and it's it's stretched enough thin as it is, where it's difficult for us to just say, okay, you go walk around with the town's inspector um, you know, every other day, um, or provide this information to the inspector every other day. So we, all we wanted to do is get an idea of um, when that needs to take place. Uh, I wanted to forewarn you that the inspector, should the inspector want to go into the mine, has to have MSHA training. Um, and, but, you know, for, for out front, I would imagine a lot of the inspections are going to be out front. Yep. Um, OSHA. And so that's not, you if know. You have OSHA, they have to be certified OSHA and MSHA. Right. Because the asphalt plant and is they have OSHA. have to wear all their PPE and all, and all that. Um, and, and that's all, all well and good. But we just wanted to get a feel for um, how often this, this person might be on site. Um, I mean, I think that <coughs> if the person comes in and checks in at the front desk, say I'm on site, has all the right equipment on, has all the right certifications, then they can, um, they can move about the site, you know, to, to a degree. I mean, you really need to be careful when you're driving around that facility. Um, there's huge trucks that go on left and right, and, um, and um, so it's a very, um, which we, we will not impart the liability for, for that inspector, I would say. Yeah. Um, 
in that, that has to, I think that that needs to be addressed in some manner as well. Um, because uh, if the person comes on and goes about their business and looks and things, I mean, even when the federal government comes on site, uh, the state government, they are accompanied by one of us, okay? Um, but this is a, that doesn't happen that often. If this is going to happen on a regular, regular basis, um, then we want to know what the ground rules are for that. And um, basically, um, not this isn't a derogatory term, but we don't want to handhold, you know, and, and walk around with someone uh, on a regular basis. What's the vision, Joe, for how often that So, I think to get started, first off, this person's going to be around, not at the court, but around the court, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to be, you know, basically watching the roads. They're going to be listening. They're going to be looking. They're going to be just basically hanging around town doing what they're doing, part of it. The other part of it is, yeah, that was respect, right? We don't want to just go walking into the or riding into the quarry and just do what we're going to do. I mean, that's not the intent here. We want to work with you. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the, the vision right at the moment is maybe monthly, to go in there to kind of just take a look at, you know, maybe what kind of quantities are going in and out, but that kind of thing. Sit down, have a conversation. Most of what we can see, I've been in there more than once, and I, I mean, we, I can see the conveyors right there at the asphalt plant. You know, maybe listen to the noise, listen to what's going on. Mm -hmm. Not not go running around the whole quarry, not go down in the mine. Um, the only reason why we're going to go down in the mine is, is you know, it, it realistically, is if there's some something that is is pulling us in that direction, some mm -hmm. sort of complaint, somebody saying that, and then of course the the it, the respect is to be with you because we're getting some sort of legitimate complaint. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The rest of it is just basically to go in there and take a look and make sure things are what being you know. It's not dusty. The nozzles seem to be working. I, I, I you know, water is going where it should be going. Clean. The roads are clean, mm -hmm. and and that is something that I think the intent was always to do with you. It okay. wasn't to not do with you. It was it was to go in, <coughs> sit down. Yeah, you know, once a month go in there, just go through some of the basic you know things that we wanted to look at. Yep. And you know, go take a look around and then get out. But okay. the, we can see most of what we need to see. Mm -hmm from the entrance, yeah. you know, and it, 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 it's not to be a nuisance, but to work with you to eliminate it, okay. nuisances. And, and I, I think a, a monthly, um, you know, is, is fine, and we can go around with the person on a monthly basis, and we would prefer to use our trucks to drive yes. into the quarry, yep. um, you know, and stuff like that. So. And I, I imagine this person in the neighborhood surrounding the quarry as well, looking at Yes. You know, what's, what's what's leaving the quarry and ending exactly. up right. on people's yep. cars and homes and gutters. Yep, and it's going to be it's going to be part of what this person's yep. responsible yep. to do. To make we sure do the same thing. We drive right around the neighborhoods and see what's happening. That Absolutely. person will have access to you guys too. I mean, the intent yep. would be to talk to you. You know, to have discussions. Say, hey, listen. You know, maybe I went over here today and I saw something was going on, and, and okay. to to basically. You know, document what they're seeing, contact you, you know, with what they're seeing to try to make the correction to be uh, less, I guess, we tend to be very reactive right now. So mm -hmm. if something's going wrong, we chase it, but yeah. we want to kind of be ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's not to be, a, again, it's not to be a nuisance, it's really just to eliminate a nuisance. And we'll go in there and we'll look at the asphalt, we'll look at the bag, bag house, make sure, you know, just it might nudge you guys to clean it a little bit. You know, you know, you know. Yeah. No, that seems perfectly reasonable if it's. No, that's the reason why when I was, before Joe came along and all this, I was going to be MSHA certified. I took the courses in OSHA certified. So, you know, that's the reason why I used to go in and do the inspections for the town before. I could go in there and knowing what it's for. I didn't go in that. Place there probably as long as you guys see you in there, yeah. As long as you guys live. I've been going in that place for 57 years. Yeah. Long time. You look younger than that, Bob. Thank you. I just had a hiccup. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the bullhorn goes out. Mr. Medeiros is on the property. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. That's I great. mean, you guys are pretty good. I mean, if there's a problem there, you know. 
I just met I just met you last year. We try to take care of it immediately. And, they, and I have a complaint. He, when I had to brush out the front along South Main Street, the trucks were sticking their noses right up into the Main Street. And it couldn't cause a major accident. And I talked to this gentleman, and he had some company come in and cut all the way back to their property line and all the way oh, up yeah. to the power lines. Yeah, so that. now you can see coming out of the quarry and nobody's going to get killed. Yeah. You know? And Some then. of these trucks got long noses, eight, nine foot noses on them. And if not a few to see, that nose is going to stick out into the road. Mm -hmm. At least now the guy, people can see what's coming up, up the road, you know? They, they did a good job. I can commend you guys. You did a good job cleaning up there. And I hope that you guys keep it clean. Oh, yeah, plan on it. Nope, that's part of it. I mean, once you've got it clean like you got now, it's pretty easy to maintain yeah. it. You know? Yep, yep. And yes. don't forget the fences that's down in the back. In the back. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's on record. She I have it. one lighthearted question to ask you, because my kids ask me. This fall, all those pumpkins, Yes. where did they come from? They came from the elementary school, um, I can't think of the school, but right here in the Kushnet. Um, I think it was, uh, they were fourth grade, I think they were fourth graders. Fourth graders? Um, so we supplied all the pumpkins. Yep. And uh, they take, took a couple of days to paint them. And um, then we went in and we, um, trying to think who judged the pumpkins, it wasn't us. Um, but they, they picked, you know, three different categories. Um, first price, second price, third price. And we gave them gift certificates. So they, and they, the kids really enjoyed it. They really did. I thought it was for every person that worked in it. And we did our own. <laughs> yeah, we do that during break. You can paint pumpkins. Yeah, his was entirely black. He just covered the whole thing. <laughs> nice. Give him an effort, Mike. Really. <laughs> What's he thought it was asphalt? <laughs> that's cheating, you know, just dipping it in the asphalt, taking it off, yeah, yeah, doing right. the uh, chocolate yeah, cover. But, but, uh, it lasts a long time. <laughs> Um, entrance to the facility, um, we did install a uh, new drain vein system in there. Um, and we're installing more now. Uh, it works very, very well. It goes to a 1,500-gallon uh, concrete tank um, that um, promise to clean out for me very quickly because it's getting full. Um, and, but everything was just shooting right in there, so it's really nice. So what we do is we take the water truck and we spray the hose and um, it's got a pretty forceful uh, front hose on it and just push everything in the direction of that so off the main drive in uh, when they come back out obviously that's when they, they tend to carry the sediment on the tires and that drops off and then we, we push that all over and it goes into the drain vein and then it goes into um, the concrete vault it settles out and then we have an overflow of clean water it goes uh, down across the property, and then it goes into a catch basin, and then the water from there shoots back over to our uh, final settling basin. So it really helps out from us, from our, uh, we have an uh, individual uh, National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit with EPA. Um, so it serves that purpose as well as obviously cleaning off the, and the you road. And the sediment out of the concrete tank is what ends up the... Uh, the sediment just comes off the, um, the the roadways when they go out. Um, but, but that's what accumulates and needs to be cleaned out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, right. a, it's, a self, it's a self issue. Yeah. <coughs> question. I got a question. Yeah. They've been promising a good many years that they were going to do a wash. When the right. trucks come by to wash it down. Tire wash. When are you guys going to do this? We already did. Where is it? On the scale. Besides that, Mickey Mouse job. <laughs> That's that is that is the wash that we have in place now. That's it. That's it. The yeah, idea is to keep the road clean enough where you don't need the wash at all. Well, the thing is, if you're only putting a little amount of water on it, you're still going to track it out. You need something that's going to spray. They had a wash rack before. It's like a high pressure. High pressure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have the two-inch line running through it. Where the scales were before. Yep. Tim Kelly. I mean Kelly took it out. Put the scales in. <clears throat> they told us that they were going to put another wash rack back, so when the trucks go through, it'll wash all the undercarriage. And by the time they reach to the scale house to get their ticket, everything will be dropped in the yard. By the time they get out to Main Street, 
there won't be no more drippings out in Main Street. Now, I'm just wondering if you guys are going to make a wash rack like that before you go into the scale. Because everything has got to go through the scale, except the asphalt. Right. Asphalt goes, asphalt around, goes around. around. Mm -hmm. But just before the scales, maybe they should have the trucks doing asphalt. Well, now you're going to be up front, so it's going to be a different story from the way out back. <clears throat> As you know, the main road going to the back was a disaster. But we're going to work on that. The plan is to bring that down a pavement. I mean, there was potholes in there as big as this, and they took dense grade and filled it up this deep in there. Yeah. And you know when you put dense grade and you keep hitting it all day long, you're going to have potholes as big as this thing. You know, and it's just... I'm going to try to take that road that you are talking about, going back to the wash plant, yeah. down to the existing pavement. Patch the pavement, repave it, and drop the grade on this side of the road. So now when the water truck the water, goes by oh. with the sprayer, it's pushing everything off of the road. Because when they did it before, they were pitching everything this way. Yeah. And everything was gathering up there and just washing across and making mm -hmm. making mud. Right. <laughs> if they, I mean, you guys do roads for a living. I mean, right. instead of pitching it this way, they should have pitched it this way and ran that water down and then run it right out into your catch basin and pick it up in there and the, the fines and the silt. If this works, we'll be able to keep the whole road clean. Beautiful. And around the scales as well. It's good to work. It's going to work. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I hope. We're just going to spend the time and get the grader and, and take it down and maintain the grade. Yeah, because right now, I mean, it's, it's bad in there. You guys get admitted bad. We're working on it. Just admit it. We're bad. working on it. <laughs> he, I saying, yeah. I work on it every day. Yeah. We put in calcium down just to stop the dust. Well, you Even have Even on days like today. You take uh, you take a little dampness, you throw the calcium down, that dust. lasts for a week. It does. We did that in roads when we were repairing roads years ago, building roads. At the end of the day, you throw calcium down, yep. that lasts you forever. You know, at least a week. Mm -hmm. And the trucks keep moving it around and yeah. it keeps making it wet. Yeah, it's and made it's, a big difference. And it don't get slippery. We put it right in the spreader. Yeah. And yeah, the spreader with salt and just I seen my the, the other day spreading it. Yep. But I just hope that you guys make a wash rack to wash underneath the carriages of the trucks. Because you're still going to have trucks going back there. We are, absolutely. You know, you can go pick up your three inch minus or your three quarter, inch and a half, whatever you got back there. And you're going to be dragging stuff out, you know. And it, they, before they hit the street, they used to wash under the carriages of the trucks. When they left there, they wouldn't be dripping all over the place. You know, the fine, fine, fines. They promised this. Joe, how long you been here? Yeah, it's been. It's always been. You know, been Ralph Urban was here. Tom Fantosi was here. All these guys were here, and they said we're going to put up a wash rack, a wash rack, and we never seen that. So. If that's something you guys can do, that'll help out you guys with dust problems going out to Main Street, South Main, mm -hmm. and you may not need to sweep up as often. You know, you can come back on your sweep up. You know. Mm -hmm. well, uh, and and one more thing, the mm -hmm. sweeper. This guy is out there at commuter time, five o'clock. Yeah. Bad business. So mm -hmm. he's going to get themselves killed out there. Yeah. You know, they're trying to go around the sweeper. You got traffic backed up all the way from over here all the way back to. I've already talked to them, bringing them in early and getting them off, off the road earlier. Yeah. yeah. Get them out at yeah. commuter times. Yeah. You know, 12 o'clock, get them off the road. Yeah. yeah. 4 30, get the heck off the road yeah. because somebody's going to get themselves killed there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because in order to pass that sweeper, you get to go on the other side of the lane, somebody's going to get caught. Mm -hmm. You know, who are they going to blame? I don't know. The, <laughs> the sweeper? I don't know who they're going to blame. The driver? I don't know. The thing is, if we can keep the trucks clean and keep the dirt off of the South dirt, Main Street, it'll eliminate, you're a, lot eliminate of the a lot of headaches Absolutely. out there. Really I'm working on it every day. Yeah. Yeah. That, that yeah. I, I really would look yeah. forward to as a board member and a board health member to keep that. If you guys could wash these trucks, other I've gone into other places and they have these sprayers that just wash underneath thoroughly. I mean, Pulls everything right out. Mm -hmm. I know anything, and I think it seems to make sense. Like, right now, you know, if you keep the undercarriages of the trucks clean, they don't take it into the road. You're not going to take it out to the main street. I think ninety percent of it's coming off the tires, rather well, than chassis, than, rather tires, than, yeah, springs. It's mostly the tires. Yeah. Yeah. And these guys are trying to go slow. Some of these guys got two hundred thousand dollar trucks, and they say, "Oh man, this place is filthy." So you know, a, there's no mud. 
then we don't have any issues. Yeah. Which, which, is, which is you maintaining the road. But if you, right. but if you, if, if you do have, but you get to drain, blame your drivers too. They overload in their their ukes, bringing it to the back, and it's spilling on the floor, on the ground. Then when a the guy comes with a water truck, it turns into mud. Keep your loads low. You're only going a couple miles down the road. You know. I'm sure you guys. I'm sure you guys know. I, I look at that road in every day, try to figure out how we're going to eliminate this problem. And I brought it to Doug's attention. I am working on it, and it will get better. I mean, you guys are pretty smart guys. You know, he's a pretty smart guy. Here. I don't know this young fellow here, but but I'm getting to know you well, and I'm, I don't know you that well, but I'm trying. I think that answers all of section 3.3. <laughs> I, I think it does. Um, Except for the requirement for um, what we would ask that the way I read it right now is that you want us to sweep everywhere Monday through Friday or every day and also vacuum. <coughs> and so we, we don't understand particularly the purposes of vacuuming um, the roadway or South Main Street. And we would ask that if if we can prove to you that we keep dirt off of South Main Street, that it's it's um, we would we don't see any purpose of vacuuming as well. Obviously, the vacuum only works when things are dry, right? Um, and it doesn't do a spectacular job even at that point. No. It, it's just it, it, again, it's the it, over the years, it, it, South Main Street is a problem. All the drippings are going out there. It's all the super fine particulate matter that's getting hung up. You're sweeping, so you're sweeping off the heavy stuff, but the light Mine stuff stays there. there. And then the next day or that night, because of that little valley, all of a sudden the cars are just flying by, and the next thing you know, you get this cloud that just oh, hangs so there. So, I mean, even at, uh, at our public hearings that we had with the Board of Health, that was a huge problem to those houses right next door. Mm -hmm. So this was, and this goes back years, this was to try to mitigate, um, you know, you, we knew you were sweeping every day, but how can we stop that fine matter from getting hung up there, especially on certain days? You know, again, the, the, the pressure's right, everything's right, you just get a cloud there all day long. So. I, I mean, the board has their opinion, me being out there seeing it and talking to you, of course, if you can eliminate the majority of what's causing the problem and the sweeping is working, then, yeah, then this is, the, the vacuuming wasn't intended to be every day. It was meant to be maybe once a week just to get some of that fine stuff off, off the road. Mm -hmm. But if you're eliminating most of it because now you're essentially dry, you don't have any mud on the road, you're not necessarily all the trucks are running to the back like they were with the asphalt all day long and coming back down this road that's just full of mud. I mean, you start to eliminate what is causing the major issues. Your asphalt plant is all on pavement now. <coughs> it's going around. Um, you know, I, th that's a whole set of other, uh, other, other issues being up front, but maybe not so much dirt. So, yeah, I mean, I think the, this whole thing, remember, is intended to be kind of fluid. Right? We're trying to get started, we're trying to work with P.J. Keating, we're trying to look at ways to eliminate all the nuisances and, and dial things in and out based on what we go, but we got, we got something that everybody knows that we're looking at. This is what we're doing, this is what we want to do, maybe we're going to find out that some of this is just useless, you know, and then we're going to eliminate some of it, but it's just some place to start, and then some place that you and whoever is here at the, the Board of Health and whoever's here at the Soil Board will always continuously do. So we'll always be doing this now. Mm -hmm. It's not something that, you know, oh shit, there's a big cloud of dust, you know. There's just something always, somebody always there watching and helping. And you guys are busy too. I understand that. You're working. You know, when we happen to see something going on, then we can help out too. So, okay. so as the time goes that. on, I think all of that mm -hmm. will be... Fleshed out, sure. Yeah. Okay, that's that's fine. Um, we wanted to add. Uh, so one of the one of the uh, questions or was was drop between conveyors to stockpile excessive at any location. Well, that's something that we definitely try not to do is have excessive because as the aggregates fall, the further they fall, the more they tend to 
Um, and Mike and these guys so, well, well, not only that, but they they, they segregate in front of each other. So you want to you want to have it so that the what's falling off is um, the same throughout. Okay. So if you're making three eighths in stone, you want to make it so that everything that goes in that pile is three eighths. Well, undoubtedly you're going to have some things that are finer and whatnot. And if you have the larger drop you have then the more dispersed that becomes and you get a pile that's kind of mixed up with different things. I mean, it's, it's not a perfect 3-8 science, you know. Um, so we really try to have to keep that distance of fall very, uh, as, close as, as close to the top of the pile as we can. And they're particularly so they can, they can move up and down. Um, but I also wanted to uh, impose on these guys to talk about uh, what else we're doing with regards to uh, Dust suppression on the uh, on the conveyors and on the um, the uh, where we screen and uh, as well as um, uh, the overall dust suppression system that's going to be uh, it's going to be all automated um, and that's going to be coming into play throughout this next year. So um, everything's going to be sprayed down. So. But, we are looking into putting a doctor dust system. We're waiting for quotes on it now. Like you had before? Uh, this will be an automated system to spray all down all the piles, all the conveyors. Oh. We are spraying all the conveyors now. Because you had a dust system before with a big giant pipe running through you. Yeah, that's not that. That, that's a, that's, yeah. that was a vac system. Vac system. This is going to be a dust suppression system. Okay. It's going to keep all the dust right it's where it is. Yeah. Uh, the bottom of every conveyor has already has a sprayer on it yeah. now. And we're going to add sprays to keep every, keep all the dust and all everything come up the conveyor dry. Are you going to keep that tower fully wrapped up up top? We are looking. We are getting quotes right now. Because I know that you had some big pieces that was gone. And those are all going to be just patched. emission all over. Yeah. Yep. I'm working on that this week. We're going to close up all the openings, yep. and we're getting quotes on covering the tops of the conveyors and screens okay. yep. to contain any dust up top. Because so, I know you guys got sprays up top. We do. But we, we want to eliminate those sprays if we don't need them. Yeah. It's just excess water everywhere, and we should be able to control the dust with the covers. So in some of the screens, again, as I understand it, these guys know better, but um, where you have small holes in some of those areas, those are going to be covered over, they're going to be recladded, and that will <coughs> solve the problem internally to those particular boxes of when the wind blows through them. So it's... Um, it, 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 you know, it's uh, the best clean spot you got with fix. aggregates is where you make your sand. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's totally washed all the time. Always water there. Yeah. Yeah. There's no dust whatsoever on that. Yeah, so that's good. <coughs> and we still have the water truck that covers the entire property all yeah. day long, every every day unless it's raining. Yeah. Um, now you're gonna you're gonna operate that at night too. When the plant is running. Yeah, I mean. You guys will be working again at night, paving, and uh, if the dust accumulates in the, in the nighttime, you're going to have that water truck in there spraying down too, washing down. Like you did this past summer? So uh, the water truck work. usually goes home around 9 o'clock at night, 8, 9 o'clock at night. So the roads continue to stay wet yeah. through the night. Just, just okay. asking. Yep. A lot of people ask. You know, but I think now with the plant being up front, the roads are going to be cleaner. All the trucks will not be coming from the back. Yeah. So I think it'll make a big difference with the dust. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is just goes back, and uh, Joe's clarified it. Um, one of the one of the statements was before you leave the site, that the inspector meet with facility staff and request the following records to make note of any record that is missing and an update. Um, we will have someone assigned to the keeper of the record, so to speak, and that person can go. Your your, your uh, employee can go and, and ask for that. Uh, information. Um, we do daily inspections. Uh, we have, you know, all the operators, the uh, truck drivers, and everybody inspects equipment every day. Um, the what is the total suspended solids content of the stormwater uh, indicated on discharge? That's no problem at all. Um, right now, <coughs> in Kushnet, we take um, we're required to take two samples at the uh, discharge point, which is right at the road that goes under the South Main Street. And uh, those are two dry samples every month. And then we have one wet sample, so following a rain event, every quarter. And so all that information is given to, um, to EPA. 
and you'll be happy to know that we haven't had any exceedances um, in TSS, is the one that's referenced here. We had one exceedance <coughs> in 1918, uh, 1918, 20, <laughs> 2018. Uh, I don't think they were looking at TSS in 1918, but uh, it just so this year we were we were really really good. Um, Marilee, you got anything on that? Any questions or anything? Are you all set? No, they they have their own permit, so they <coughs> they're in pretty good shape as far as flood water goes. Yeah. So again, from the inspection standpoint, I would just say that it, the assumption would be that the inspector, at some particular <coughs> point in time, not every time, would be with you. Maybe take it, you know, do that with you. Mm -hmm. um, just again, it, the intent of this is always to be working with you, not against you. Mm -hmm. um, just so we know that. It just is the fire chief has dealt with 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 you know finding all the answers and making sure that he knows exactly what's going on with the last thing, and we're able to answer those questions. We know, we just yeah. know. I mean, you know, when somebody calls up, somebody has that conversation. We have the answer. We've mm -hmm. been there. We did it. We saw it. Yeah. Uh, it. And again, it's not to do it every single solitary time. So, um, this stuff again is there because we need to look at it. We need to think about it. I mean, from a conservation standpoint, even, I mean, it, we're not that, it's EPA regulated, but, I mean, people, that there's questions about everything, about, <coughs> right, um, right. And, and the concerns and, and comments, and, and this way we're just covering all the bases. Yeah. Yep. They're yep. doing we, their we, job, this is what's happening, this is what we found out. Yep. We have to monitor for several things, nitrate, sure. nitrate, uh, total suspended solids, pH, turbidity, yep. um, you know, there's a number of things, and you're more than welcome to, uh, we can make copies of those reports that we receive right from New England Testing yep. Lab. Feel yeah, free, to, free to take them. Yep. Um, <coughs> no, nothing to hide in that regard. It's all public uh, information. Um, I got a quick question. <coughs> Another question. Make it real quick. Not side of the pit. Are you guys going to make a road to go down into that pit where your water reservoir is? We're... Um, are we going to make a road down there? Um, I was told that you guys are going to take fill and fill that hole in and make a road to go down on the north side of where LNS is? A ramp, yes. What are you going to use for fill? Uh, over there we're going to use the overburden. Overburden uh, primarily. the stripping project. And uh, uh, we, have, we have geotechnical information on what we can use and what we can't use. And to Don't make get, it. We want to keep that pit open for water in the future. Do you guys put overburning in there? Well, it's to you build a ramp so we can... I, okay, well, are you going to have enough overburden to fill that up to make a ramp? Uh, I, I don't know the specifics of that, but that's the, the main ingredient. I just don't want junk put in there like oh, we're not, we're black not. top or anything. No, no, no. Because I know one no. time they started dump black top and I stopped them right away. No, no, no fill like that is going Nothing. in there at all. It's all, whatever Natural. comes out of the mine would be used okay. over there. Um, and the, the way that we can continue to mine the bigger portion and give you a bigger surface area on your lovely lake someday is to uh, be able to take the material well, I ain't gonna up see that ramp. I ain't going to see that. Well, I'm not going to see that. <laughs> None of us are going to see nope. it. Well, maybe one, but she's still young. <laughs> I'll be up in Riverside with her. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, I just want to make sure we keep that hole clean. You know, I don't want no junk in that hole. We're doing it up. No, we're it's, junk in it's, we're stripping to expose yeah. Brock to drill and blast. Yeah. So what we removed from stripping is going down to build this ramp up. Well, when Nothing the, that's when, coming when out. When the out asphalt plan is now, I would not prefer you guys taking that, that fill out of there. This side of it, that side of it. But where the asphalt plant is now, too much contaminants in there right now with oils and asphalts and all that stuff. I would recommend not using that fill for down that hole. As you know, there's spills back there, oils and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff back there. Where the asphalt plant is right now, mm -hmm. it's had a lot of contaminants falling No, I, I understand your point, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't. I know there's plenty, plenty amount of overburden that you can take to make a road. Besides taking where you're going to take that asphalt plant out of there, I know you're going to develop that in there to, 
open up that pit. Mm -hmm. the big one was stopping short of the asphalt plant, though. What's that? Was stopping short of the asphalt plant. We're not actually going back to it. Oh, you're not? Nope. We're, we're, we have a cut line going. We're stopping short of it this yeah. year. This yeah, year. in the future. We, in, the future in the future, future we I, I just rather have see you guys take all that contaminants around that asphalt plant and dispose of it in the back or the hill where you're putting your sludge and whatever, you know? Because mm -hmm. uh, I just don't want to see that moving around, you know, with your foils and asphalts and all kind of crap around, you know? You've got good clean overburn like you were taking out where you just opened up? Yep. yep. That's fine. I have no problem with that. That's clean. But where that asphalt pine is, pretty dirty. You know, I don't have to tell you guys. You guys already know. <clears throat> so I, I really prefer not having that going down the hole. Okay. That's going to be in a minute, so. Okay. Um, okay, we're getting through this so really quick. Um, the, the, are the bags replaced uh, regularly? Yes, that's part of our DDP requirements to, to replace the bags. Uh, we do Visalite testing uh, every year. They go in and look at the um, uh, visually um, the what the bags look like. There's uh, 1,280 bags within the bag house itself. Um, so we go in and inspect those um, on a quarterly basis. Um, our permit requires us to do the Visalite once a year, the beginning of the season. Um, if we find that we need to do it more often than we do, if we see that by visually the bags are in poor shape, then we replace them. We have all bags on site. Uh, so. How about the blue gas? You have a blue gas system back there now, you're going to hook that up in front? Yeah. To take the gases away when you open up the chutes mm -hmm. on the asphalt? Yeah. I know he's not in charge of that. That's. No. That's Nor am I, but I know we do. Yeah. yeah. I know that they haven't been using it back there, uh, that don't turn during the day. Yeah. And I know that uh, the fellow that was here before was oh, Yoka. Um, Kevin Yokin. Kevin Yokin. He said, oh, that's always working, and I never see the thing on. Well, we do have a, 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 a are blue you gonna smoke use the filter. Same, are you using filter. the same system that you got there now, or are you going to put a new blue gas system in? I don't know if we're using the blue. I don't either. Um, I can. I'll take a note on that. I don't know if it's new. I mean, he, I mean, the fellows here. I don't think they know much about the asphalt plan, so too bad I'm here. You know, I asked a lot of questions. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's Sorry about that, guys. It goes both ways. So. But I'm only looking out for your yeah. interest and the town's interest. You know, yeah. that's my interest. No, I think that's I took an oath for the other town, so I get a uphold my oath. I took an oath for the military, and I uphold that. Okay, and I think the closeout meetings and the uh, discussion, um, you know, for on a monthly basis is fine. We can sit down and, and discuss what your inspector um, has has observed and um, see what changes we need to make to. Yeah, so I, just again, just go yep. through it, keep it simple, looking at things, talking about it, and then, you know, again, as time goes on, we'll see what it is. If it's less time to do the more formal inspections, you know, then that's what we'll do. Yep. Just at the beginning, you know, maybe, like I said, maybe monthly, maybe as it goes on, it, it goes every couple of months or every three months, mm -hmm. something to that effect, or tw twice a season. You know, you don't know the, the more formal internal inspections, you know. Mm -hmm. So, those so I think that concludes uh, our, our response. Um, one more question, then I'm going to shut up. Is this the short one? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you stack for your for your gases from your burner. Mm -hmm. How high are they going to put that? Because I know uh, back when way out in the back when we have low ceilings, like in a in a uh, fall time, the mm -hmm. ceiling drop. It carries the vapor across into the into the houses, is that stack that they're going to put onto this new asphalt plant, is that going to be higher, or is it going to be the same height as what they have in the back room? I don't know the elevations. Yeah. Again, I, know, I don't know. I don't like, know what Aztec has to I say. Don't they don't know the... I do, too. I don't think I, they I, can't go any higher than 65 feet, right? Yeah, well, so height-wise, I'm not sure, but I can tell you we had a conversation um, 
I just figured I'd just bring it up, yeah, you know. Just just to the board. I had a conversation with, with our consultant, Woodard and Karn, as we were talking about this. Um, they, in turn, had a discussion with Tom Cushing, um, mm -hmm. the head of the air, air you know, about yeah. what we were doing and how we were doing it, just to make sure that everything was five by five. You know, we didn't want to step on anybody's toes. Mm -hmm. um, and as they had told us at the meeting uh, with Tom Cushing, the... Their consultant, which I forget what they're, what they're called, the ETG. ETG, yeah, redid the modeling for the new location of the, the current location of the asphalt plant, the air modeling. Um, and that was satisfactory to um, DEP, to Tom Cushing's crew. For the height. Height and the dispersal. Dispersion. Yeah, of the of the emissions. So the, it's going to be the same height as the other one. I think these are. I don't know if it's the same height. I know the silos are a little bit lower. I, I think that back of silos yeah, were because they were bigger this way. And yeah, shot this way. But yeah. whatever that height is, the modeling was done. We wanted that um, because we were concerned about it being in the front versus the back. And again, at this point, there's no reason to believe, you know, it's coming from DEP that there is any any concern. Yeah, I think the max on the zoning height there is 90 feet, but I don't know if it, that I don't know if that's the top of the where the um, tanks are or, or the smooth, yeah. Right. yeah, I I don't I don't I don't remember that exactly. I know did some height differences, that? but the 65, height. 65. I thought it was 65 on the stack itself. It, it could be. Or the height is just. The max height we can do is 90, and we're pretty we're close to that. Well, what, what happened, too, when they had a fire in that other one up there? Uh, the fire department had a hold of a job trying to get up there. They had to get the haven in with their ladder truck. Remember that? I do. And uh, they could have lost a lot of material up there, you know, because mm -hmm. it was so high, and we don't have the ladder trucks. We have a ladder truck now, yeah. don't we? Yep, yeah, we do. Oh, so we don't care. Let it burn. <laughs> Chief will send that truck right out there. Good practice, right, Chief? That's what he wants. <laughs> but we can't push it all into the water. Now, the reason why I was concerned, because if, if the stacks are not high enough to go above the ceilings, when the ceilings are low, yeah. uh, that's yeah. just going to float along South Main Street and whatever, you get your southwest winds in the summer, mm. and it's going to float up this end of the woods. Yeah. Or if you get a northeast, it'll blow that way. You know, it all depends on the wind is blowing. But right. I mean, if your ceilings are low and the stacks are not high enough to go above the ceilings, it's all going to float downward, and everybody's going to have that smell. Yeah. Um, we do track every day. Carl does what the uh, the wind and uh, velocity and direction is going to be for each day. But we're also going to be putting up an anemometer on top of the asphalt plant with a digital readout, so we'll know wind direction, speed. Humidity. Yeah, because they put an airbag on uh, those things. socks up there like an airport's got. Wind oh, yeah, the wind yeah. socks. They used to have the socks on the... This is going to be a little bit more advanced. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> you can't go wrong with a sock because... Wind lines, but we're getting everything down. Wind socks still gives you a good idea of wind direction, yeah. though. Yeah. We're going to keep those... In a it's not an instrument that can go bad. Basically. No. At least we'll Light wind stump comes, wipes it out. It's, that thing is still out there. Yeah. With the wind yeah. showing you where it's coming from. Right. So <clears throat> the wind speed picks up too much, and the direction of the wind is in the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, we'll know right away. Oh, yeah? yeah. So. I have, I have no more moving. questions. Keep I have too, questions. Questions. Keep I have too many questions tonight. <laughs> but, you know, so, I mean, I, I, I think that we've covered um, the, the discussion, all the discussion points. Yeah. You know, we've got and a I think of this gentleman did a great job in answering yeah. our answers. Thank you. He did his homework. Any other any other comments for the gentleman? No. No. Nope. We have a, a, a couple of housekeeping things. Um, really. Yeah, these guys can go. Right. Yeah. And uh, you're not. We'll see you February 11th. You'll be at the hearing on February 11th. Oh yes. You all we'll, we'll be at yeah. February 11th. I'll see you on Monday. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but as far as, um, is this, uh, soil board meeting continued to another date? So we actually are, are, are scheduled for the 19th. <coughs> yep. So that, that will come at the end. Because hopefully we'll get some feedback. We, are, we, 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 we tried to schedule two of them because, uh, 
Yeah, we should, by that time, Joe, we should have some info back. Yep, yep. I'll, I'll, I'll hit the ground running tomorrow. And so you guys will get some info from your company. If you want me to help with the bond and Copeland and Page? I can. I'm willing to be I would love, process. just so we don't get uh, get the hiccup, yeah. it, just if you, you send me an email, maybe, with yep. some of the thoughts that, you know, specifically what you're thinking, maybe mm -hmm. it take it, it, let me get you some of the stuff maybe yep. that we didn't get you. Um, and just a, a quick what one. I'm and this way I, I, I get hit right on the head. And then I'll talk to Woodard and Karen about, you know, again, whatever it is that they perceive as a closure plan. Yeah, and, you know, and if if you feel it's appropriate or helpful, we'd be happy to attend a meeting with, with you all and Woodward and Karen. Um, I, to your question, uh, what are we going to be providing back by February 19th? Um, I think we're going to... In my opinion, we hold off to hear what Woodward and Curran has to yeah. say, yeah. Um, and then then we go from there. We just need, because in my own mind, we need a little bit more direction, as you indicated, um, and um, and I think a discussion as well with your complimentary page. You mean what? What would you expect that this is uh, the appropriate way to go about this? Yeah. We're going to pull all that together. Right? Great. Sometimes stretch a little thin. So. We were talking the other day about something about bathrooms. Oh, yeah. Might as well bring it up now. Yeah. So uh, I we were we were curious about yeah the the septic systems. We know we did look into you pumping um, on a right. You know you, you, we seem to have you know on a regular basis that you're pumping, but we don't really have any any really accurate information on what's out there. So this is Board of Health kind of mm -hmm. hat. So we're just going to ask if uh, you could get us some basic information on what's going on. I mean, we're not looking necessarily for designs, but, you know, maybe some depths and locations, locations of where where they are. Um, I mean, it's that... Because right now we don't have nothing on record of where everything is. We know we have a pumping record of somebody going in there pump. Mm -hmm. But we don't know any locations where the your holding tanks are. I know you don't have leach fields, you have all the holding tanks. All tight tanks? Tight tanks. Okay. So we don't really know where those tight tanks are, and we should have a record. Am I right around what sure. we're talking? Sure. Absolutely. That where all these tanks are located, postponed to the, the next February, week? The February meeting, I'd like to read them. Is it all right with you, fellas? Yeah. They'll just email this right. afternoon. How about the permits? The permits, we have to do that tonight. Yep. Okay, uh, we're all set with you, fellas. Okay, thank you very much. Be on your way. Thank you. Thank you. Got a long time to go. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay, uh, the permits: Donald and Charlotte Aquino, 588 Mill Road, Pico Construction. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Get a motion to accept them. This is their 29, 2020 20. permit. Yeah. Right. Everything's in order. Yeah, they're not. Uh, Joe's got that pretty well in order. Anything. Just they keep an open permit because it's like any kind of permit or license. If you lose it, you, yeah. you're never going to go get through it back. a bunch of now. And it goes to the board of selectmen, and they're not able to amend it. Then we're we're locked in for a year. If we don't approve it now, or if the board of selectmen can amend it once it gets to them, then that not happen until after the 11th of February. Thank you.